Hey guys, <laughs> as you can tell, I still haven't gotten my um, voice back, um, so it is a blessed Wednesday, and I'm Leah Virgin, your Christian mentor, Christian prayer warrior, and Christian writer at BurstingWithBlessings.com, and I am so abundantly blessed to be here with you guys today. God keeps just giving me the energy to get through, helping me heal bit by bit because I'm learning through this okay <clears throat> so you know I think that that's some things that we forget to take trials and simple situations and try to learn from them right try sometimes it doesn't mean I always get it right sometimes a lot of times I don't get it right <laughs> um, but uh, today I I hope you can bear through the fact that my voice is still not fully there. But y'all, I have this kind of definitely a, an excitement to talk about what we're going to talk about today. And God always comes up big. He does. He is powerful and loving and complex and awesome. And as we dig into the word, he will highlight things. Things will just jump out at you. And one of the things I do is I listen to my Bible app on my phone while running. And, or while showering, or while dressing. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys, bear, bear with me. I'm going to have a little cough here and there. But I love the Bible app. And I love that immersing my mind into the spoken word changes my thoughts and changes my perspective and changes the energy that I have for the day, changes my focus for the day. And somebody me that she's just having a hard time plugging into the word and she's not and she knows it's wrecking havoc on her life y'all the enemy seeks to destroy seeks chaos the enemy is not only a spiritual entity not only is chaos Satan's playground it's what he loves to send into our lives is chaos and brokenness right he seeks to pull us away from God because he knows if we plug in we're gonna start building the fruitful life we're gonna start getting mindset shifts we're gonna start being fed and watered we are planted in the living water when we are reading the Bible and that living water is watering the parched broken places in our soul and our mind <coughs> <coughs> we're getting through this y'all promise because this is too powerful not to talk about so I'm going to encourage you guys Get the version app on your phone. Start playing it. Multiple times a day. If you're bored, you're frustrated, you're driving somewhere, stop turning on music that does nothing for our soul and our mind. Turn on your Bible app. You know, it just spoke to me. And then this verse today that we're going to read just reiterated that, right? That was the whole transformation and change for me was when I won an iPad years and years ago. I won an iPad for filling out a survey at work and God intended for me to have <laughs> this little mini iPad. I didn't sell it. I started listening to the Bible on this mini iPad while I was folding laundry. That's how I started. 
That was the beginning of the breakthrough. I had realized that things were not going well in my life mentally and spiritually. And I'm plugging in and I was like determined to listen to the Bible, the entire Bible. And I listened to the entire Bible on this app. And this was back when we lived in Texas. After I had come back from something that I was just like, oh my God, I, I'm a spiritual mess. Like, like I'm a mess. Like what, what was I thinking? What my behavior was not what I wanted it to be. And I realized like, I'm a mess. This is not okay. And here I am going, I, I, I'm supposedly a Christian, a Christ follower. I mean, how many Christians are out there that have never really opened their Bible ever? Right? No wonder non-Christians are like, I, I don't really see a need to be a Christian. <laughs> okay, because, you know, you guys really aren't bearing the light of Christ. Well, you don't bear the light of Christ unless the word of Christ is shining out of us, right? <clears throat> so that was how I started listening. And then I started picking up my Bible and reading it along with listening. So today I was just running and I was just letting the word of God just wash over me. Like, don't make it complicated. Satan makes everything complicated in our lives. Like, oh, that's so complicated. Just give up. So uh, That's why I never started my blog. God told me to start my blog years ago. I go for a decade ago. Instead, I went to nursing school. <laughs> I, I don't fully regret that. You know, it's not like an absolute regret. Sorry, my dog is going nuts all right now. Because that's what he does when the mail... And I, I didn't do it. And then when we moved here to Maryland, the guy was like, start a blog. I was like, no, I'm not special. I, I don't have really anything good to say. I'm not worthy of that. And I'm not sure. I know I said I'm not special enough. And God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. We talked about the fact that God provides for where he calls you. I'm not good enough to talk to you guys, right? But do you really want somebody's pompous and perfect talking to you, <laughs> right? We want somebody who's like digging in and like transforming themselves and hashtag real and raw, right? That's what I want. I, I don't, I don't, I do want people who know the word better than me to tell me I'm here to like talk about with you guys, encourage you guys, mentor you guys to plug in, to think. Definitely, that's what I'm here for. And I'm not perfect, but God is giving me like all the time. Every time I'm done talking with you guys and praying, I'm like, oh, that was totally God. <laughs> that was totally God because I, I don't know where I came up with all of that, you know. And, and when I came to think about today, I... And, and what we were going to talk about today. And I kind of thought this is the verse. And, and then I kind of thought about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could kind of say that. And then God kind of nudged it just a little. And I was like, yeah, that God. So all, God is powerful and awesome. And he uses his word to transform us. And, you know, I always hated it when people, my pastor would give me a guilt trip about the fact that I wasn't doing my Bible time. I did years in church and I would be like oh no he's talking about Bible time again and I don't do my Bible I feel bad but then I didn't do it right we have every excuse because Satan hands us the excuses I was the victim for years I was the excuse girl for years I used words that would come out of my mouth that were disempowering oh I'm sorry I can't do that that's actually disempowering words. No, it's, I don't want to do that. I have other plans and other priorities. Wow, that's powerful and uncomfortable. If there's a woman listening to me, I bet your hackles just went up. Because mine did. As a woman, we don't talk like that. 
Not all, I mean, not everyone. There's a lot of empowered women out there. But I, I grew up in a very disempowering household, in a very Southern disempowering household. Not all Southern households are like that. Calm down. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. But uh, mine was because, you know, if you grow up with broken, pe broken sinful people, you're going to have some brokenness. But, you know, disempowering, we disempower our children with the words that come out of their mouth. And I make them all the time say, no, you chose not to listen to me. So you can say, I chose not to listen to you, mom. That's power. We power with our words. We make excuses for, oh, I don't have time to exercise. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is 20 minutes in your day that you can do walk away the pounds with Leslie Sansone. Seriously, I can, do, I can do that in a hotel room like this small on my laptop. Amazon.com. You know, I have to run like I do. Three and a half miles, four miles. Dude, I started out, I couldn't do a mile in 20 minutes. I actually just saw it pop up on my memories saying, oh my God, I made it a mile in 14 minutes. Right? And right now I'm pushing myself to run at under a 10 minute mile. Not while I'm sick. If you guys saw, I was like, woohoo. I did 3.4 miles in like 11.30. That made me very happy. <laughs> because I'm not going to push myself too much. But I want to encourage you guys and empower you guys. And that starts with plugging into the word. And y'all can get a lot from these videos. But I also want you guys to spend five minutes. Set your timer. Five minutes. Press play. Press pause. And you'll crave it. You will crave it like chocolate, sea salt, and peanut butter nut granola. I, it just becomes craveable to me. I, I crave the word of God. And I want you guys to build that into your spirit so that you can produce the abundant fruitful life. Everybody can either have excuses, right? We can cuddle with our excuses or we can build a future. Right? We can empower ourselves, lift ourselves up through the word of God. And so I know you're like, the title, I saw the title said how to have peace. Mm, it goes into playing into what I'm going to say that Jesus wrote. Jesus said, and then his disciples wrote. Apologize. Let me make that clear. Matthew 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. I threw in daughters, just so you know. It was a very masculine society back then. <laughs> All right. So, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. So, we can take that as making peace with other people, speaking words that don't incite wrath. But, and it definitely means that, for sure. God means don't run around, you know, smack talking people behind their back. What's the new thing? Throwing shade. I don't know why I like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm not cool and I'm not hit. I know, I know. I probably am not even using it right. But anyway, uh, what I find is that we are supposed to bless others by our words, right? But what are our words come from what fills our heart. So I'm going to go to the individualistic side of things. And remember, we can't be peacemakers if we are at peace inside ourselves first. So our inner dialogue, we are just as much instructed to be peacemakers here so we can be peacemakers out there. 
So what is your inner dialogue saying? If you are not giving your soul the words of peace, like I am loved, I am forgiven and set free. I am transformed in Jesus Christ. My God is making something new. Will I not notice it? Do not think on the things, the former things. All those are from the Bible. Do not think on the former things. I am not qualified, but I'm made qualified. I am beautiful inside and out. Can you say that? I, I made my daughter say it the other day. It was one of our affirmations. And she was like, no, I don't want to say that. And I was like, whoa, mothering fail. Whoa, wait a second, mothering fail. What do you mean you can't say that? I don't want to say that. That's not true. I was like, okay, I, I failed as a mother because you are beautiful inside and out. And if I have not expressed that in a, such a way, or I have allowed this broken, sinful world to tell you you are not beautiful. But I, I've lived with that for the majority of my life. And, you know, many women put tags on themselves. And just like my Christian coach says, what you say the tags you put on yourself. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm a depressed person. I don't tag myself with that anymore. I struggled with depression for years. You guys know that I said it yesterday. I don't struggle with depression like I used to because I have better tools now from mom boot camp and all the coaching sessions. No, I don't struggle with anxiety like I used to. I talked to, with um, a class I teach, not my ESL class. Don't panic. I didn't talk to the little Chinese students about my anxiety and depression. <laughs> I, I teach healthcare workers too. <laughs> and I told them, I, I said, do you, can you even know if a patient is having a panic attack inside their head? I said, I had a full panic attack inside my head while sitting there calmly speaking. To my healthcare worker. And I was having an absolute utter meltdown inside my head. And that does not happen anymore. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. I am calm. My spirit is calm. I have the peace of Jesus Christ flowing within me. And guys, if that's what you want, if you are struggling with peace, then it, and if you're struggling with peace words to other people and to building positive relationships and building relationships that are loving and peaceful. If you don't have peace about who you are and how awesome you are, you are fearfully, wonderfully made by the righteous right hand of God. Adonai, knit your very being together. You are beautiful inside and out. Your royal diadem in his hand. He died for you. You are precious in his sight. No matter what the page of Vogue says or this world says. But peace must start with the chaos that is here that Satan keeps throwing his flaming darts. The evil one keeps throwing his flaming darts. And how do we extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one? With the word of God. The shield of God. The word of God says, No, I am qualified, forgiven, and loved. My God gives me wisdom when I don't have it. In great measure, he gives wisdom to those who call and ask Without reproach, he gives us. He's constantly waiting for us to say, Lord, I need you. I said today, Lord, I can't do this day without your energy and strength. 
And so, you guys, I want to pray for us that we start rebuking the thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ that come into our minds that tear our peace down so that we can't give peace to others, our children, our family, our co-workers, wherever it is. The guy that cut you off on 495. Yeah, be blessed, dude. <laughs> I now say that instead of the other words. <clears throat> we deserve to live the abundant, fruitful life in Jesus Christ so that we can shine the light of Jesus Christ. Because when we shine the light of Jesus Christ, when we have that peace and we are so joyful, life just transforms. We can bear through trials and tribulations with much more ease if we have that peaceful thought process. Y'all know I can't even listen to secular music. It's like <coughs> messes with my mind. And it, it like, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't make me feel good. And it's not edifying to the words that come out of my mouth. And I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not saying turn off <laughs> non-Christian music. And don't get me wrong. When my husband puts on like any sort of music, I'm going to listen and let him enjoy his music. But for the most part, what I choose is Christian praise and worship music because I need that to stay centered, peaceful, productive, and triumphant with stamina to perform the tasks that God has assigned me down to the last detail. Right? He has called us to something great, mighty, and wonderful. He craves us to have that strength from him. And that strength comes from his peace, comes from his word. That, that is how we can turn what God is, wants for us. And what Satan is tearing down and creating chaos and turning everything upside down. The only way we can battle that and stay peaceful and walk through that fire is with the word of God surrounding us like a shield. His favor surrounds us like a shield, right? And this, this is his favor, his gift, his precious gift to us. And we can say it over and over, right? I am a royal diadem in the hand of the most high God. My name is written on his palm. I am loved, forgiven, and set free. I, I dwell in the shelter of Elion, the shadow of Shaddai. Psalm 91, right? So, mm, we are going to pray. We're going to praise and pray that, that ladies, gentlemen, sorry is how to have peace. It takes daily. You need a shower every day? Well, guess what? You need the word of God every day too. Or you become stinky. <laughs> Your words become stinky. <laughs> right? I'm going to use that now. I'm going to tell my kids. Those are negative words. They're stinky words. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, God Almighty, thank you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this gift, this very favor of this word. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that we can call on you. Thank you, Jesus, that you can rebuke the chaotic thoughts and the flaming arrows of the evil one that tell us we're not good enough, we're not loved, we're not beautiful, we're not strong enough because you, you have called us by name. You said we are a royal diadem, precious in your sight, worthy of dying on a cross, forgiven, set free, loved. You said, I give you my peace. You didn't just say, I give my peace only to really special people. You said, I give everyone my peace that calls on me. 
the Holy Spirit dwells within us who call on your name. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you said, Father will send the Spirit to dwell. Your shalom is so much greater than what we could imagine. But yes, you do say that we must come to you, the living water, and we must sink our roots deep into that living water of your word and soak it up every day so that our leaf will not wither when the scorching sun of trials and tribulations beats down on us and tries to just tear us down. No, with your living rotter, we can just blossom under those trials and tribulations because you turn all things to our good, to your glory, Lord God. Help us to rebuke the evil one, to dig deep into your word, to bear fruit, to stay in peace, to transform our heart and our words and our mindset so that the words coming out of our mouth are the peaceful words not only inside our hearts and minds, but they are coming out and coating everyone around us with peace and light from you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We submit ourselves for your transformation and change. Lead us, Lord God, to your paths of righteousness so that we are blessed peacemakers. So that we can bear up underneath trials, tribulations, whatever anyone can say against us, we can bear up against it for we are blessed by you Lord God for we call you our master our Lord our Savior thank you Father Son and Holy Spirit forever and ever Amen all right y'all I wish you an abundantly blessed day and I hope that these thoughts that I'm encouraging you to think on and these actions that I'm challenging you to I hope that you will think on them pray on them and enact them for your benefit for the glory of God so that all those may see your good works and glorify God and if you're like Leah <laughs> I need more tools on how to do that. How do I do this? How am I going to do this? Whatever area it is, BM me, DM me. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you, challenge you, show you how to plug in, how to do that. So I pray to be with you guys tomorrow. I wish you abundantly blessed. Uh, Wednesday. Yes, it is Wednesday. I'll see you guys Thursday. I pray.